Hey Gooners, this is Alan Smith. This is Kevin Campbell. Lee Dixon. It's Colin Lewin. It's Gary Lewin. Charles Watts. Dan Potts. James Benj. Stanley. Tom from the Gooners Talk here. It's Ryan Ocross. Simon Collings. You may know me from the Evening Standard. You may know me from my time at Arsenal. You may know me from Arsenal or even the Hybrid Squad. I'm a bird cat wonderland. Being that physio set on the bench next to Arson with my rubber gloves on. The former Arsenal physio. The Emirates press box, from writing, from Twitter. From goal.com, from Twitter, from YouTube. Football is the beautiful game and it brings us all together. Sometimes there are things even more important than wins and losses. And yes, even transfers. Every 30 seconds someone in this world gets diagnosed with blood cancer. The Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society works towards curing blood cancers. And provides support to families currently dealing with these diseases. Gunas vs Cancer was started in 2017 by a lifelong Guna who lost his father to leukaemia way too young. Since 2017, Gunas v Cancer has raised $120,000 for the Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society. And we need your help to keep the fundraising going in this year's campaign. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. No matter the size. And every donation enters you into the Guna raffle. We have a great chance to win amazing Arsenal prizes, including game tickets, stadium tours, signed men and women shirts. And maybe a retro signed shirt by yours truly, Lee Dixon. Me, yours truly. Yours truly. Super Kev Campbell. So much more. It's easy to take part. Just go to www.gunasvcancer.com and donate directly to the charity. Pick the raffle prizes you want to enter to win and wait for the drawings at the end of the campaign. Again, that's www.gunasvcancer.com. We all know that victory grows out of harmony. Victory grows out of harmony. Victory grows out of harmony. With your help, we'll be victorious against blood cancer once and for all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your support. Thank you for your support. Now, I've been looking forward to many, many hours of this of this thing, but this is potentially the one that is is going to be the, the memorable one of all. Uh, we, uh, we we've had requests. We've had people demanding. What's happened to the FA Cup of football phrases? We did the uh, the preliminary phases. Uh, we then did the round of 64 with Peter Drury, Sophie Nicolau, and Lee Dixon. And I've been waiting for the right time and the right judges to help us get through the final stage. And I believe we have them today. Um, now, I don't want to overcrowd this, so I think uh, we, we actually were going to say goodbye to both of you uh for this and uh and that way we can we can move forward but uh hang around for a little bit because there is a possibility if there's some technical issues that i might need to bring one of you back so if, you, if, if you're up for it just hang out backstage and 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 be on the ready so um but we're going to do the fa cup fo uh, football phrases right now so so um for the introductions before we get started with that let's have you guys hang out and we are very pleased today to welcome to the podcast two folks who uh, were both introduced to me via our good friend, Peter Drury, making their first appearance on the podcast. Welcome to John Champion and Jim Proudfoot. Welcome to the Gooners podcast, both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure. Nice to, nice to speak to you. And uh, um, congratulations on everything you've achieved so far, uh, Mike and everybody else. How are you finding it 20 hours in? Has it been okay? You know, it's it's uh, adrenaline is keeping me going. A couple of couple of diet Red Bulls. Uh, I have to say, I did finally start to implement the diet Red Bulls. I don't drink coffee, so that's my only uh, my only caffeine input. Um, and, uh, and and we're we're going strong because it's these segments that I keep. You know, why would I start to get tired when we're about to do the FA Cup of football phrases? I mean, there's uh -huh. just not, there's there's no reason not to. Um, and uh, and 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 Jared, did you need to go or did you, or um, uh, yeah, I've got a couple things I need to take care of this morning, so I'll have to jump off. But I'll, I'll be around the rest of the morning. I may be able to jump back in uh, for one of the later segments. And uh, okay. if not, I'll definitely be joining you for the uh, the celebration. Hopefully that will be the final hour. Okay, beautiful. And and um, and and so take care, Jared, and uh, we'll see you a little bit later on in the afternoon. 
Absolutely. And then, and, and we do have one more person to add. I'm going to do it in just a second, though. Uh, if you've watched the Gunners podcast over the years, you know that some of our favorite guests of all time are those in the football commentary business. Uh, as a kid who grew up doing sports commentary into a banana with the sound turned down on the television, I've always had a fascination and appreciation for the skills and the focus involved to do it at the highest level. I, I can't help but sound like I'm reading, though, so uh, so I'm just going to keep going. Every time we've had one of our football commentary heroes, like like Phil Shane to Derek Ray to Ian Dark to Peter Drury, um, you know, we, I've been amazed at how humble and funny and gracious the brotherhood of football commentators are, or the football commentators union. So we've got two more of the absolute best. You hear their voices every weekend, calling the biggest games. We've got them here today. Please welcome to the Gooners Pod Podathon, Jim Proudfoot and John Champion. Thank you so much for joining us. Woo. And uh, and and now we need to take a moment to uh, we, you know to play the highlights, some highlights of Jim and John uh, that uh, are brought to you in a very special way. So uh, so Jim, John, sit back and enjoy the sounds of your own voice, I suppose, uh, as we uh, play this clip. Lambakisa, dispossessed by Martinelli, the back heel for Zinchenko to deliver. Martinelli. Good readjustment, Odegaard, two for him, two for Arsenal. And a five-point lead at the World Cup break beckons for these top gunners. Martinelli, Trossard, in behind Saku, the break though for Martin Odegaard, it's three. Brilliant first half performance from the gunners. Boy, do they mean business, this. Another big statement of intent. As the status quo is maintained at the top, they have blown Fulham away. And with us today, we have the man pictured in the video, Young Noble Commentary. Young Noble coming to us live from, from Lagos. Is that right? Yes, Young Noble Commentary from Nigeria. Jim Bradfoods, John Champion. <laughs> Are you guys are, are you guys aware of Young Noble? Have you have you seen these videos? What do you, I mean? Are oh, you? Yeah. No, absolutely. I know, no, I know. It's, 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 uh, sorry, John. Oh no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that um, Young Noble and I have never actually spoken uh, face to face. Uh, I hope he knows what a huge admirer of uh, his work I am. Uh, I've, I've spoken about it in a couple of places before. It's just exceptional and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, it, it's always the highlight of um, my weekend and I get home from work flick back through his feed to see who it is that he's, he's done this week and it's uh, I'll take it as a real badge of honor if, uh, if and when it is is me and I know that a lot of uh, our colleagues feel exactly the same it's just fantastic and it always brings a smile to my face it's uh, it rounds off a weekend perfectly so uh, you know the young noble that uh, I'm a huge admirer of you and um, thank you for what you do thank you for the entertainment that you bring and it's really nice to speak to you yeah I I, uh, I would I know there's I think there's a bit of a delay so I was just trying to give them a chance to respond so thank you so thank you so much, Jim Proudfoot. Um uh personally uh, a very big thank you to the Gunners Board for this uh, uh amazing campaign that you guys have started and uh, for this uh, big platform, a huge platform for me to see uh uh the Godfathers of football commentary, Jim Proudfoot, uh John Champion. Last year it was Peter Jury and this year uh, it's just amazing, it's just amazing for me. Uh what I do is what I really love a lot. Uh back to my team days and right now i have uh, the big opportunity to speak directly with uh, uh uh my idols the godfathers jim proudfoot and john champion and i'm so so honored for this uh massive moment that that i have had so john do you do you like that or do you like do you like when people are uh, lip syncing you or is, 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 i mean are because i know peter seems to love it Jim, you, you you love it. I mean, I, I I log off the podcast every time we're done, and I just sit to, sit around and wait for the lip syncing of the podcast to to, to take place, and 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 I'm still waiting. <laughs> John, have we got you? 
I'm not sure if there's a connection issue. That, uh, I think yeah, I, I, I must apologize. I think there's a bit of, of a delay on this. So I'm, I'm kind of hide, hearing half of the other half. So my apologies. My apologies. I mean, I, I, that's astonishing, actually. What the, the clip you just showed us, I, I have to say, I, I'm perhaps a little late to this particular party. Uh, in in the, I, I wasn't actually aware of this uh, idea of lip syncing of, of commentators up, up until you introducing me to it, Mike. So it's something I'm going to have to go actually looking for to, to, to sort of um, understand it rather better. Peter Drury has mentioned it to me beforehand, but I, I've never really seen it at first hand. It's so clever. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm, as you can probably tell, I'm a little taken aback, actually, at, at the thought that anyone would, would be sort of interested enough and brilliant enough to do it so consistently. Uh, and clearly it's something that, that is really popular as well. So I need to get on board. As usual, I'm about 20 years behind the time. So my apologies for that. Well, and, and it's kind of funny because, you know, he, you expect when you actually hear his voice uh, in real life, you expect him to sound like a, uh, you know, a, uh, an English man. Uh, you know, just because of that's always the the sound that he's doing, and and um, so yeah, the lip syncing is hilarious. The costumes are hilarious. Um, they're it, they're they're very funny. He, I mean, the microphones, the headphones, they're all like like tools and stuff lying around the house that he uses. And um, and I and I was showing this earlier when Peter was on, but Peter actually met there. Um, Young Noble has a counterpart named uh, Arap that is Kenyan uh does the same kind of stuff um he's also a comedian and he was in qatar for the world cup and uh through social media even though peter doesn't uh doesn't have a twitter account through social media this was arranged um <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible and and this is all you have to know about uh about about uh peter drury right here is that the man was wearing uh, uh coffee mugs on his ears um, and and making a face into it. I mean that that's that's a guy who has a good sense of humor about himself. So, um, but we got to get to something here because we it, we have a very and they suit him as well, don't they, Mike? Don't you think? <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure he took those home with him. Um, so, I hear he's still using them to this day for every cast. <laughs> yeah, we are, um, and 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 we've got a very important job in front of us, and and uh, we want it to. You know, to to make sure to uh, to to get this done today. So, um, I've told you both about the FA Cup of football phrases. Um, I have a obsession with language, uh, specifically the English language in the truest of English uh, context. And I I love. I think the reason why so many Americans love the beautiful game and love specifically the English Premier League is because it is different from the things that we're accustomed to. Um, it isn't the same thing over and over again. It's things that you're different, that you don't get here. It's not just an adaptation. It's, you know, we're, you know, we don't want it to become Americanized, which is why, you know, NBC and other, other broadcasters have finally realized that the more authentic, the better. Guys like the two of you should be calling games, not people who we're used to seeing calling American football and basketball and so on. Um, and, um, uh, and, and there are certain phrases, and I've collected over about a hundred of them that I just absolutely love, and you only ever really hear them uh, in a footballing context. So, um, so what we've done is we've created a a knockout tournament of these phrases, and we will be uh, essentially treating it as a uh, as a tournament and taking it very very seriously, <laughs> and going through these and and determining a winner, basically. You're, you're free to kind of give your explanation of why you're picking one or the other, what the, what the, what the sayings make you feel. Um, the goal here is to, is to make this, you know, this is the most important competition that we are dealing with today. The international break is on. There's no football today that of, of, of any significant consequence. I'm probably offending some countries that are playing today, but um, this is really the game that, that, that is uh, of utmost importance today. So I'm going to share my screen. Now I'm going to bring back young noble um, but I, I have asked in here as a backup judge because we need th we need an odd number of judges, and so we're gonna we're gonna have three judges here, and I'm gonna bring back Young Noble. But I I just with the with the caveat that you know that that if we have another disconnection, we're just gonna have to roll forward. Um, so do you guys do you guys understand the rules pretty much? Yeah, I think so. So um, 
you give us two phrases, we say which we like best. Um, exactly. And, and, and you know, go, we're, this is the final 32. We started with 96. We had a preliminary round. We had a round of 64. Gone, eliminated in the early rounds are such esteemed phrases like onion bag, hair dryer treatment, sixes and sevens, panic stations, dead rubber, wage packet, and purple patch. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and you know, the, we, we thought we'd see some of those in the final stages, but we, uh, we, we have not. And so now my honored guests will be putting on their judge's hat, their powdered wigs, and they will be taking these final 32 competitors down and through the gauntlet of the, br the bracket, the crucible of competition until 32 becomes 16, 16 become eight, eight become four, and then finally with a life of two phrases will be forever changed. One experiencing the Valhalla of victory, the other forever stuck with the dagger of defeat. So are we ready? Hang on. Valhalla of victory. Let me just yeah. write that one down for you again. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm trying, shoot. I, I, if we hear one of these going on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very, very honored. But the Valhalla of victory. I don't even know if that makes any sense. But uh, all right. So here is the first bracket of 16. We, we can call this the, uh, the, the East bracket here. The first two, and these were randomly drawn together, Flatters to deceive and schoolboy error. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Flatters to deceive and schoolboy error. And we're gonna we're gonna go around in in, uh, in order here. Our first uh, judge today is John Champion. What are your thoughts here? Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna I am backing flatters to deceive here. Uh, I think there's a there's a bit more subtle to to it. Uh, Schoolboy era in a, an era when we're, we're not supposed to be sort of specific about genders. I'm not comfortable with that. So I think flat is to deceive for that reason above any other. Okay. And that has uh, absolutely been uh, been mentioned before in previous FA Cup. So, um, um, and, and, and Young Noble, we will be going to you if and only if there's a, a, a draw between the two. Uh, you'll be our tie-breaking judge. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right, so uh, so Jim, I love the progressive uh, angle that John just went with. Like that was that was some good stuff. Keying in as twenty twenty three. Good, good, good start. Good start. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so Jim, uh, it's also particularly remarkable that it should be me doing that. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> school 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 person error or or flatters to deceive. Uh, no, it's it's flatters to deceive for me as well. Um, that's yeah, no, no difficult decision there. So definitely flatters to deceive to go through. Um, I think, uh, as John says, that has a, a little bit more subtlety about it, although it is something that is used quite, quite frequently. But um, yeah, if I if I never had to use the other one again, I would be quite happy with that. So flatters to deceive. All right, and I for some reason have completely forgotten how to actually do. Oh, here we go. Uh, so with a two nil victory, flatters to deceive is on to the round of 16. Um, next, we have rich vein of form and smash and grab. Uh, we'll reverse the order and start with Jim Proudfoot. Uh, I like smash and grab um, because I think that it's uh, I think every fan that has been on uh, either end of it. Uh, can really relate to it. I mean, it's, it's something that is, again, it's used quite a bit, but um, a very succinct uh, way of getting the, the message across. So smash and grab gets my vote. Okay. And John, are we putting them through or are we uh, going to go down to a tie-breaking vote here? Um, I, listen, well, I, I kind of feel the weight of responsibility on my shoulders here. Uh, and at the same time, you know, we all know that these broadcasts, we need a bit of of controversy, we need a bit of conflict, and I find it very difficult to argue against Jim. So I'm afraid on this occasion, with the promise of controversy and conflict to come <laughs> further down the bracket, I'm going to go smash and grab as well because I just, as Jim said, it's so direct and to the point, and uh, it's got a bit of impact about it. So I like that. I like that. See, I, 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 I appreciate your opinions, and and you are the judges, you are the arbiters of this con. This I would have gone differently on personally. Cool. Uh, rich vein of form whenever there's a word that's used in a way that, that that seems completely alternative to the way that you're normally used to using it i mean to me a vein is more 
you know, of, of, of a medical term, but this is just r rich vein of form is a little more poetic to me. And that's why I like it. Um, quick, quick cameo from young noble, which would, would you have gone with had you been given the tie breaking vote here? Yeah, I would have gone for rich vein of form. Rich See, vein of I, form. I thought I thought so because it's it's more fun to lip sync rich vein of form as well than yes. smash and grab probably. Um, all right, this is this is going to be a controversial one. I can already tell, but we're going to start we're going to start this with John. Early doors against second bite at the cherry. Okay, uh, I'm going to go early doors for personal reasons. Those personal reasons being that I think that the man that first started using early doors in television football commentary was a gentleman I used to work with by the name of Big Ron Atkinson. And so wow. with a doff of the cap to him, he's still around, knocking not too far from me. And I saw him the other day. He was out for a stroll at the age of 84. And I shouted out of the car window and he knew with surprise. So because of Ron Atkinson, I'm going to go early doors, even though um, I think the, the alternative is, is actually probably more viable, but for personal reasons and in the hope of stirring up arguments and controversy with Jim Proudfoot, early doors for me. Beautiful. Well, you've, you've, right. Yeah, you've done it. Here's your, um, here's the first disagreement. I can't abide the phrase early doors and um, nothing against Ron. I used to love watching <laughs> Ron on the television. It was absolutely fantastic. And there were a number of Ronisms uh, we used to get. And early doors has become part of the footballing vocabulary. Um, despite the fact that on the face of it, it actually makes very little sense. Um, so second bite of the cherry, quite mainstream, um, but I'm going to go for that uh, just for a little bit of jeopardy. All right. And, and, and we have our first tie-breaking uh, situation, and it all comes down to Young Noble, uh, early doors, second bite at the cherry. Who is going to take this? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to disagree with uh, John Champion, and I will be going for second bite of the cherry because that is more explanatory. So second yep. bite of the cherry. All right. We have second bite of the cherry. And Early Doors has been defeated. Now, a, a quick story about Early Doors. Uh, the individual who put Early Doors through to the round of 32 was no, none other than uh, than uh, Lee Dixon. And we, we held this uh, competition, I believe, in early January. And I kid you not, at the very next opportunity – Watching his, uh, his 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 broadcast, I believe there was a goal in the first few minutes of the game, and he he said early doors, and I took that as a personal shout out. <laughs> uh, Lee Dixon, uh, you know, I'm like I'm putting these in your head. So the next game that you call will be, and and one of you's doing. Uh, John, are you doing England Scotland tomorrow? No, I'm not doing England Scotland. Uh, I think Lee Dixon. I don't know whether Lee Dixon will be doing doing that. I do have some games with Lee coming up this weekend, though, so there is the chance that he could choose to uh, throw in one or two more of, of the. I, I would warn you about Lee Dixon, by the way. You've got to be very, very careful what you say in his presence because it's not oh, just yeah, in the context I've, I've of a competition that. like this, but things you say to him suddenly appear on a broadcast. You, you I, I would just caution you to be wary of that man. Yeah, John, I, Jim, can I ask, why are the doors never late? Yeah, there's no late doors. There's there's um, there's a word for that as well. But uh... <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a very good question. I I, I don't know. I suppose <laughs> the, the early doors is the you know the well, it's self-explanatory, but probably but Jim, uh, relates to drinking time. I would suggest somewhere. Yeah, J Jim, you're doing England Scotland tomorrow. Is that right? I'm um, yeah yeah I'm yeah. I'm doing it for for radio um, over here and I think probably probably Sirius XM are taking it I don't know about that but uh, well I'll go. email you all these phrases and then I'll listen to the game tomorrow and and it'll just be it'll just be one constant flow of how to fit in all thirty two of these into one yeah, half absolutely. yeah just life. just bingo yeah, cross them all that's off. the kind of yeah, professional yeah. you are you'll, you'll do a stunt like that uh, at this <laughs> stage in your career I'm sure. Um, and, and speaking of, yeah, I guess the opposite of early doors would be squeaky bum time, kind of. Um, squeaky bum time and diabolical. We'll start with you, Jim. Uh, it, it's got to be diabolical. I just, I, I love the, the way that you can um, express so much meaning with it. Oh, diabolical. Yes, that's uh, so dramatic. The, the emphasis and the, 
and the, almost the vitriol that, that can uh, that can come with it. So yeah, it's definitely diabolical. Uh, and in the chat, me. feel free to uh, feel free to express your opinions in the chat. The judges will not be influenced, but you can uh, you you can let us know what you're thinking. And John, uh, squeaky bum time and diabolical. Okay, I'm going. Uh, I'm going to go squeaky bum time. I'm on a roll of disagreeing with Jim now, and I, I'm just going to go because it's something that's it's been added to the football commentating lexicon within our lifetime. So it's not something that's been around forever and ever. Something that was in and uh, and it's so evocative, isn't it? You one can have all sorts of uncomfortable thoughts about what precisely squeaky bum time could be uh, in particular different contexts. So uh, for that reason, squeaky bum time for me on this. Yes, uh, squeaky bum time is 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 quite evocative. I I would agree. Young noble, it, it it comes down to you, diabolical or squeaky bum time. Squeaky bum time. Oh, <laughs> squeaky bum time. That's a you know traditional phrase that uh, th that we love. Uh, now, squeaky bum time has won. It is through diabolical. I, I consider this a bit of an upset. Diabolical is 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 in the pantheon for me. Of, of things people do not talk about diabolical here in the states but you hear it in football all the time aston which would you have gone for there i well i, I would have gone with squeaky bun time but you hear diabolical all the time that's like a, a a villain my question though is obviously have you ever met anybody with the squeaky bum and how would they go about fixing that is there like some sort of oil you that's put a, on the that, bum? That's, that, that's a medical version of our podcast that we'll be debuting after the potathon is over. But uh, I, I will not put either of these gentlemen in a position to have to answer that question. Um, well, actually, I, I, well, I'm happy. To, I am happy to answer it because I'm the very few occasions that um, brave, brave Jim. I ever brave. made the newspaper uh, was sitting at an international commentating at Old Trafford um, uh -huh. behind. I can't remember. Well, I can remember who England were playing, but probably it, it's more politically sensitive not to mention uh, the the name of the game. Um, but the two of our uh, colleagues who I'd never seen before, hadn't seen again. One of them had obviously taken slight exception to the, the um, maybe the pre-match meal or something that he'd eaten in town earlier that <laughs> afternoon, and the situation became so repugnant that. Uh, Alvin Martin, a former England defender who I was working with at the time, uh, we both collapsed in uh, fits of giggles, having tried to sort of explain the situation and tried to skirt around it without it being too graphic. Um, and the, anyway, the said gentleman didn't reappear for the second half, but for about five or six minutes, we were no good to anybody. So that's my uh, uh, almost a squeaky barn time anecdote. Was That's it a J what, was it Jason Punchin? Uh, was that the uh, were either of you uh, announcing the Jason Punchin game uh, for Crystal Palace when he left for five minutes in the middle of the second half and came back? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Thankfully, oh, still my favorite football game of all time. Uh, just 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 behind actually Anfield eighty nine is is the game that that Jason Punchin went for a uh, you know what? All right, bags of pace on his bike. Um, I I think we are going to I, I might have mixed up the order, but John, bags of pace on his bike. John. All right. We'll, Is this me, Mike? We'll Sorry, I lost you last a while. Yeah. Yeah. Bags of pace and on his bike. If if this is me, Mike, and I'm guessing it is, uh, I'm I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going on his bike, on his bike. Um, I like I like the metaphor. Uh, bags of pace. I I take it or leave it really. Uh, but on his bike, yeah, I, you can say that with a bit of vigor, uh, and occasionally with a little bit of vitriol as well. So I I yeah I I think the, the context. Someone's been sent off. He's on his bike. Um, or you know, he's sent a defender slithering in the wrong direction. He's on his bike, so it's, it's multi-use, multi-purpose, and yet carries a, a certain strength and weight to it that I appreciate. All right, very well said, uh, Jim. Uh, yeah, I'll go for for on his bike as well, which I think, and John may well correct me, but it was certainly used a lot in political circles back in sort of the the nineteen eighties over hmm. here. 
Um, and I don't know, so that was, would be Norman Tebbit, I think, who was a, a member of parliament who first came up, up with that. Um, but I don't know whether he was the first and whether it sort of it came into uh, football and sports broadcasting usage on the back of, um, of it being a Tebbit phrase or whether it was something that he had sort of picked up from elsewhere. I don't know. But uh, yeah, on his bike for me. All right. Lost the plot and on a knife's edge. Uh, we'll go right back to you, Jim. Uh, lost the plot, I think, is great because, again, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, you. It doesn't need any sort of further um, description. If somebody's lost the plot, you know that they've uh, uh, their thoughts have gone west of where they should be. So, yeah, lost the plot. The thoughts have gone west. Their see- their, their red mist is descending. Um, on a knife's edge, Jim. I'm sorry, uh, John. Hmm. Uh, there's only one winner here for me, I'm afraid, and I'm, I'm with Jim on this. Lost the plot. Um, this is, you know, it, it would be the ideal phrase to de- describe Martin Keown in close proximity to Ruth Van Nistelrooy, wouldn't it? Um, so yeah, yeah lo- uh, lost yeah. the plot. Not in close proximity to Martin Keown, no. I, I love this one. I love this one because one of the things, if you guys don't know, I'm in Florida, which is in the south of the United States, right? And there's one thing <laughs> that Southern people and English people do well. It's the in, the insult by being nice, like like very politely insulting somebody. And lost the plot is such a like nice way of saying you're an idiot. <laughs> like <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing. And it's so like typically English, such such a great phrase. Yes, very, very nice. Very, very perfectly, pleasantly condescending. <laughs> um, pants and pockets of space. This is a tough one for me. Uh, I, I like both of them, but uh, we'll, we'll start with you, John. Or no, sorry. Sorry, we're going to start with Jim. Okay. Um, I, um, I, I, I have a... Okay. Uh, that's my fault because I know we have a delay and, and I, and I just went and ruined that. So yes, let's start with you, John. Okay. Um, well, I've got an issue with pants because which pants are we talking about here? Are we talking about American pants, which we would call trousers, or are we talking about what you wear beneath your pants or trousers, which in the UK would be pants? So there's, there is that sort of slight question mark about the uh, definition of the word in its normal sense, which makes me slightly uncomfortable. So even though it's quite satisfying to say, oh, that defending was pants, I think I'm going to go pockets of space because that, that leaves plenty to the imagination, whereas pants doesn't really. Okay. And Jim? Yeah, these days I don't have many pants that do have pockets of space, but that's uh, something I'm trying to get to grips with. Um, pockets of space for me. I would yeah. never, well, until the weekend, uh, the night is young, but I, would no, I don't think I would ever use pants in a commentary. Um, but yeah. as, as I mean, you say, I, now that you were sort of, um, you're putting all these thoughts in my mind, Mike, I, you never know. You just never yeah. know when it might come out. I, I'm tuning in tomorrow. And, and and it, soon. There's going to be pants. All right, uh, we will start now with Jim on down the garden path and turn on a sixpence. I can safely say I just not that long ago turned 50 and I don't remember a sixpence. So it is um, such an archaic phrase these days. Um, Obviously, it was a very, very small coin. You understand exactly what it means, but um, just for... Uh, the fact that I think it is probably such an old, an old phrase with little modern day relevance these days. I'll go down the garden path. All right. And for you, John. Uh, well, because I'm that little bit older than Jim, I'm going to go for turning on a sixpence. So sixpence, a sixpence was enough to buy me a bag of what we would call crisps and Americans would call chips as a kid. So I've got lots of happy memories of buying a, a bag of golden wonder crisps for a sixpence. And I also think it's important that we remember the pre-decimal days. We had decimalization <laughs> in this country in 1971 when all our, our farthings and shillings and sixpences Chillings. were cruelly swept away. So I'm afraid I'm clinging on to my, my youth, which is an awful long way in the rearview mirror. And I am turning. 
All right. Well, we're going to have to bring in bring in the tiebreaker here, Young Noble. What do we like here? Yeah, Down the I'm garden here, path to turn on a six turn. Yeah, uh, both words, uh, both phrases, uh, I think I uh, really uh, see the usages, uh, but I'm going to go with uh, Down the Garden Path with Jim Proudfoot. All right. So Down the Garden Path is there. We've got, uh, we, we, we're we down to the final eight on that side of the bracket, and we're now going to move over to the other side of the bracket and, and, and work through these. So uh, we will now start with John having a mare. And fluffed his lines, his or her lines, of course. John, is this me, Mike? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, okay, again, apologies for the delay. Right, uh, fluffed, fluffed his lines for a commentator is way too close to home. So, um, and in fact, if you fluff your lines, you're having a mare. So, hmm, I, I'm, I'm having a mare. Okay. I, having having a, a mare. It's a toss-up, really. It, it, both, both of these phrases um, send me into a cold sweat at the thought of, of, you know, me fluffing my lines and therefore having a mare. But having a mare for me. All right. Interesting that they got drawn randomly against each other. But uh, uh, Jim, your thoughts on this? Uh, so I'll go for fluffed <laughs> their lines. Um, I, I, I like that. I do use that a bit, actually, I must admit. Having a mayor, when I worked in, in local radio, um, having a mayor became having a, a, a nightmare on Elm Street, which just became having an Elm Street. So I always think of, of that someone's still having an elm street even though i sort of haven't worked with a lot of those guys for about 25 30 years so i would uh i would definitely say fluffed his lines would be All my right. favorite and, and young young noble it comes down to you which i, I have a feeling i know which one you're going to say but which which one is going to go through to the next round yeah um i think i've heard you i've heard the fluffed his line over and over weekend uh, during premier league weekends um I would go with Plotus line. I think um, okay. that's more suitable uh, to use for me. Plotus line. Okay. Plot, Jim, I'm line Jim, I'm telling you right now, if you manage to work um, having an Elm Street into a, into a cast, you will go down in the Hall of Fame forever. <laughs> that yeah. would be footballing, just pure, pure poetry if you managed to do that. Yes, that I mean that would be the that would be the moment that we would all uh, just retire this game for. Um, <laughs> Challenge <all> accepted. Right. <laughs> Jim, watching. Par park the bus and taking the piss. I would never use the second one of those. Um, yeah, I guess so, that's kind of unrealistic to expect. Yeah, expect um, on me. yeah, yeah, just because I think that as as a word uh, and as a phrase that probably has not different connotations necessarily, but I think probably more widely accepted, it would be more widely accepted, my guess is, uh, uh, with you guys, than it would be over here. So, um, yeah, part the bus for me. All right. And, uh, and, and John, I have a feeling I know the answer. All right. We're really, uh, part, really part part well. the bus on this yeah. one. For reasons as Mr. Proudfoot. Okay, so park the bus here. I apologize to everybody about our internet uh, connections. We're 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 going to try to soldier through it here. We've got about another 20, 25 minutes to go. Top bins and howler. Um, uh, start with Jim. Uh, so yeah, my vote's for howler. Top bins is something my my youngest child says all the time um usually when he's placed one straight down the middle he'll still claim oh dad dad did you see that top bins i just think it's a horrible phrase i can't abide it uh, so i'm going for howler okay all uh, right um and for you john 
well, uh, uncomfortably, I'm now starting to agree with Jim more often than I'm disagreeing with him. And I am going yeah. Howler as well on this for, again, the same reason. I, uh, Toppins is horrible. I mean, what, what is it? it I, I might well be wrong. Jim is much more in, to, in tune with um, modern day popular um, conversation here. But I think it was the product of, was it Soccer Saturday on Sky Television yeah. in the UK? Saturday morning. I, where I first heard top bins and I rejected it out of hand in an instant then and I still do so many years later so very happily going with Howler well I mean, top bins extent, they've got the wrong number of bins because you can only hit one of them at a time so top bin I still would detest but that makes sense top bins is just oh he's hit the postage stamps what well it's, just, and it's, it's, it's better than what they call it over yeah, here it's on any level it's better than the Americanized version of it, which is upper 90, uh, which I absolutely cannot stand. But, uh, but all right, so Howler is through, and we're going to see now who Howler will be playing in the round of 16. It is between Pony and Rosette. Kind of a, a close relative to Pants, but we're going to go with Pony uh, against Rosette. Jim? I like a bit of Cockney rhyming slang because I think it's a lot of it is very clever. This is sort of one of the more... Um, sort of straightforward ones, I suppose, um, being a derivative of pony and trap. Um, but you can get away with, almost get away with saying that somebody is is pony or something has been pony. So, yeah, I'll, I'll cheekily go for that. Okay. And John? Uh, I'm going Rose Ed, or as you would call it, Rosie. Um, that's That's definitely the one for me. Here, I think it's uh, it's one that I've had recourse to use on a number of occasions down the years, and it's never let me down. Okay, and we may have we may just have a big upset on our hands here. And young noble, you're gonna you're gonna make that decision. Who is taking this to the next level? You're on mute, young noble. And I think that's my fault. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my mic was off. Uh, I think I've heard uh, Rosette from John Champion, uh, like he said. So I'll go with Rosette. Rosette. And Pony has been knocked out. I believe Pony may have won the the, the uh, FA Cup of Football phrases a couple of years ago. So this is a, a massive upset that's just occurred. Um, and, uh, and we'll keep pushing forward here. Made a meal out of and against the run of play. Uh, and this one we will start with John. Okay, against the run of play. I mean, hearing that, uh, I, I'm not, no, against the run of play, no, absolutely not. Um, so on the basis that was acceptable to me, um, I'll go for the alternative. All right, made a meal out of. Uh, again, something that you would never hear over uh, over there. I mean, making a meal is, is generally not associated with football, but it is, is, it is in England. Jim? Where are we going with this? Uh, I will go for against the run of play, uh, much to John's chagrin. Um, it, it's, it's something probably that it's it's an easy phrase to fall back on. There are almost certainly many better ways of saying exactly the same thing than it's against the run of play. But I'd be lying if I if I said that I didn't overuse that. So I've I've uh, I've got to keep half my vocabulary in play. So I'll go against the run of play. And, and, and the reason I don't like against the run of play myself is because almost all of the goals that Arsenal have allowed this season were, have been against the run of play. But uh, Young Noble, where are we going with this? Who's going to go through? Um, I will be going with against the run of play because to me it's a word that I have used on my own, uh, in my, my own locality here. So against the run of play. Okay. Against the run of play is through. Under the cosh and gaffer. We'll start with Jim. Um, I, under, I don't like under the cosh because of the, the connotations of, of what it actually means, if you think about it. And, and, you know, we had the 60 years ago over here, had a great train robbery uh, where the driver famously got coshed, hit with something, you know, very, very large and 
it feels a little bit over physical, really. So gaffer, I think um, everyone can relate to gaffer. Every, a lot of us have had somebody that, uh, even in broadcasting circles, still regarded as a gaffer, even if you don't work for them anymore. It's a gaffer for me. Okay, John. John. Yeah, yeah, I'm gaffer too. Uh, I, I just think it's a perfectly evocative phrase. And for me, it conjures up visions of the archetypal football manager in the mohair coat uh, with the cigar. So Ron Atkinson, who we referred to earlier, Sam Allardyce, people of people of, of that ilk, Mike Barrett. There's a there's a fictitious one, but that that type of thing. They the um, hard drinking, hard chewing, um, cliche ridden football managers who were really for Jim and I were our life through the 1980s and 1990s. And of course, we now live in much more sophisticated times, but there's still a few of them about. Uh, and it's always quite nice when they turn up. All right. Fantastic. And uh, we'll stay with you, John, for handbags against purchase. Purchase as in he should have hit that shot with a little more purchase oh goodness um i mean handbags we... go on as in well yeah handbags versus purchase purchase as in like he could have hit that shot with a little bit more purchase all oh, right okay yeah i'm with you well handbags we're getting into i mean we're back to our first answer here aren't we um uh, handbags. We're getting into dangerous territory in this day and age. You probably tell that I've, I've been to a, um, a session on diversity and inclusion um, yeah. uh, within the past <laughs> week. So, uh, yeah, handbags. I'm going to wait from that. Uh, on, on the basis I could get in trouble, fully understand. And I'm going to go perch just because it's not handbag. Okay. Yeah. And I think there are a few competitors in this, in this, that'll, that may be removed for the next iteration of this. So we're going to go with purchase. Uh, Jim, your thoughts? Uh, for exactly the same reasons. I'm also going for purchase. Okay, good. And we can put that behind us now. Um, <laughs> home and dry. And, and, and we're, we're hopefully going to be home and dry soon and, and full of running. Jim. Uh, I like home and dry. Um, just it's a yeah a, a good phrase it's something I can I can remember. Um, it was a fantastic uh, um, commentator who worked on the radio in the in the in the seventies and eighties. And although there's a, a slight age difference, it's not as much as John would make out between us. Uh, he and I were both, I'm sure, remember Peter Jones um, commentating, and uh, he had this thick melodious Welsh accent and which I won't try and replicate now, but home and dry is something that I, I can hear him saying. So home and dry for me. Okay. And John? Yeah. Home and dry, because it, I just think it's a, I mean, it, it's a staple, but it's still quite a clever phrase. Whereas full of running, well, aren't all professional sports people supposed to be full of running? Isn't that a prerequisite? So isn't it just stating the blind and the obvious so home and dry okay. john if you supported the team that i supported nothing is ever a prerequisite <laughs> all right now it's going to go quickly we have flatters to deceive against smash and grab well, let's start with you no no i mean uh, jim and i could actually bore you for hours about our respective teams so yeah <laughs> one of you is york city is that right that that was you, Jim? No, it's John. John supports York City. My, That's my, correct. I support, yeah. Yeah, I support Torquay, who are a, a division lower, a lower still than, than that. So we're now in the sixth tier of English football. Not even, not even truly national anymore. We're playing in a, in a southern-based division, which is what we've come to. But I still love them. You've got it, haven't you? you gotta, you got to love sticking with them no matter what the level they're at. Um Flatters to deceive and smash and grab. Uh, John, start with you. Okay, I'm I'm going with smash and grab um, for the same reasons I chose it last time. I just think it's strong to the point, punchy in every sense, and um, it delivers every time. So I, I I like it. I use it, and there we go. Old faithful. All right, and Jim. Yeah, I'll second that. I'll second that. 
See, I think I, I, what I'm learning here is what I love about these phrases is not appealing to either one of you because they seem so part of the normal fabric of what you're accustomed to. What I like about flatters to deceive, you would never hear those words used together in the States. Um, flatters to deceive is, is, is just, it rolls off the tongue to me. Whereas smash and grab, I mean, those are two words that can be used very easily over here. They can even be used, you know, you know in the same sentence. And, um, and, and so, yeah, I, I, uh, I think I'm, I'm learning that my sensibilities are maybe counter to yours, but that's why we have you as the judges. Um, so it's two nil to smash and grab flatters to deceive has, has been eliminated. Um, they do not get a second bite at the cherry, but second bite at the cherry does against squeaky bum time. This is a pretty good one. We're going to start with you, Jim. Yeah, uh, um, merely because of what it's up against, I'll go for second bite at the cherry. Okay, second bite at the cherry. And John. Uh, we haven't heard from you for a while. I think we need to bring to play. So I'm going to go squeaky bum time here. Oh boy! All right. So now we are uh, we're back in the hands of Young Noble. One of these will advance to the quarterfinals. Who's it going to be? Squeaky bum time. I, all right. Just w skating through two to one uh, this time. Once again, beat Diabolical two to one. We've 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 basically got Squeaky Bum time all the way through to the quarterfinals based on Young Noble's uh, <laughs> decision here. Um, can, can I ask a quick question? Can I ask a quick question? Because now that it's out and we can talk about biting a cherry the second time, are you biting it a second time because you missed the cherry and you need a second round of biting it? Or have you taken a tiny little bite out of the tiny little cherry? You need two bites to finish it. No, Aston, I think it's the first one. I think that it's, mm. you, you, know, you, you missed it the first time. So you, you're, <laughs> you're, you're like you're blindfolded and you second just... Second opportunity to... To, to get your ample mouth around a cherry that's probably too small for you yeah okay good that's good to get that kind of insight here so we now have on his bike against lost the plot jim we'll start with you uh and i'll go for for on his bike for the reasons that i mentioned last time i just think it's a a, a peculiarly english phrase i mean i know a lot of these are but um i like on his bike okay and john uh, I'm, I'm going to I'm going lost the plot, um, partly to be controversial, um, partly to be contrarian, and partly because I think if you're listening to a TV or a radio commentate and you hear the commentator say, "I lost the plot," I think you sit up and take notice. So I I quite like it for that that reason. Okay, exactly, and 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 plot doesn't really mean over here the same thing. So again, I love the I love the differences in that. So I I. If it were up to me, it would be lost the plot here, but it's not up to me. It's up to Young Noble. And where are we going with this one? Yeah, it's up to me, and I'm going to agree with Jim Bradford. Lost the plot. You lost this, All right. Jim. Lost the plot is through. Um, the bike has crashed, and lost the plot is through to the quarterfinals. We now go to pockets of space <laughs> and down the garden path. Uh, John, you could go first. Okay, uh, I'm looking out of my window at what used to be my garden path, and it's disappeared into what now resembles a jungle. Um, but I, I, I do love the imagery of going down the garden path. I just wish I could do so at the moment here at home. Um, I know I voted for Pockets of Space last time and voted against down the garden path, but in this contest, I'm taking the garden path. <laughs> wow, that's, an, that's that's a shocker. We have we have the the reversal. I think he's he's uh, it's it, it just hit him differently here, and and that's and that's the way it goes sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, so Jim, down the garden path or pockets of space? Are you going to save uh, pockets of space, or are you going to condemn them to to the loser bracket? No, I'm going to save. I'm going to save pockets of space. Um, they they need saving. It's as simple as that. Oh, thank you, Jim. Um, now it's up to you, young noble. Ah, this is tough, but um, I will be going with pockets of space. Pockets of space. Yes, pockets of space. Uh, we have. They've gone through. 
Um, I, I'm thrilled about this, and uh, and thank you for your tie-breaking vote here. Now, now it goes quickly. We're down to the final eight. Uh, Sma- other side? Oh, yeah. No, we're down to the final 12. Um, fluffed his lines, parked the bus. John. Fluffing his lines. No, I think the internet is fluffing his lines. Uh, for point. All right, let's go to Jim. Uh, I will. I'll go for park the bus. I think this time because there are a few ways that that can be maybe developed a comedic effect. So park the bus. Don't you feel, though, if you're saying the phrase park the bus, that you're watching a boring game? Yeah, but fluffed his line. You know, you're a commentator. Games are never boring. They're intriguing. (laughs) I like that. And sometimes intriguing with a capital I, which means very boring. But, yeah, no, I know what you mean, but I'll go park the bus. Okay, John. Yeah, I'm parking the bus uh, to 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 use another uh, well-worn phrase every day of the week. <laughs> but I'm parking the bus. Okay, and John, uh, we'll we'll stick with you for Howler against Rosette. You can you can actually have a Howler that goes into Rosette. Oh, this is a... yeah, you can. They, these are these are almost interchangeable. Uh, Rosette, Rosette, just because it's two words rather than one. <laughs> Okay, and Jim? Uh, yeah, I'll go for Rosette as well. Um, a lot like the Torquay defenders on a good day. All right, exactly. And uh, against the run of play and Gaffer, Jim, we'll go back to you. Um, well, against the run of play here, I'm going to go for Gaffer. Um, go, okay. I do like Gaffer. All right, and John? And I'm, I'm going to channel my, my inner Sam Allardyce, and I'm also going to go for Gaffer. Okay, beautiful. Um, we definitely have some favorites there. I think Gaffer's a very, very strong one for both of you. I'd probably put my money on them if I had to pick a winner here based on the, your guys' de- de- decisions. But um, we're almost home and dry, but they may, may or may not make it into the quarterfinals. Purchase and home and dry. Jim. Yeah, Home and Dry just hasn't quite got enough purchase on it for me. So it is going to be purchase that is Home and Dry in this time. All right. Fantastic. And you, John? Mm. Uh, I don't buy purchase, so I'll go Home and Dry. Ah, okay. Calling in the reinforcements. Young Noble, you're going to decide who makes it to the final eight and who goes home miserable. Yeah, home and dry. Home and dry is winning for you? Yeah. It's so American. (laughs) Yeah, home and dry. uh, uh, Purchase. uh, You just, you wouldn't use purchase in that manner in the States. And that's why I like it. So, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, but I'm not the one making the decisions here. So, all right. Smash and grab. Squeaky bum time. Who have we got? We'll start with John. John. Yes. Uh, squeaky bum time. This is this is this is getting tough now. But squeaky bum. This is squeaky bum time. So squeaky bum time. All right. Beautiful. And Jim. There's never a good time for a squeaky bum. So it's smash and grab for me. Oh boy. Well. <laughs> Get in. Get in. For the third straight round, this particular phrase goes to Young Noble. Yeah, we are grabbing this. We are grabbing this. Smash and grab with Jim. Come on, young noble. Oh, Come on. <laughs> he has, he has absolutely de- deserted Squeaky Bum Time. Squeaky Bum Time is feeling completely let down by, by young noble right now. 
Um, it's a very birdie trail. thing. Yeah. Well, and and uh, <laughs> and and I think I think they feel that they've just been the victim of a smash and grab. To be honest. With you. <laughs> um, all right. Starting with Jim this time. Lost the plot and pockets of space. I have a definite uh, favorite. Yeah, pockets of space. <laughs> all right. And John. Uh, pockets of space for me too. Yeah. <laughs> and they're through. <laughs> oh yes. Woo. Pockets of space. I'm glad that we didn't do this in the middle of the night when my wife was sleeping because I cannot keep quiet anymore. We are getting to this to the final stages here. Aston, um, have you got money on this? By the way, this is a, a I, superb, <laughs> superb reaction. It, yeah. it, it's just we're, we're getting to the like, you know, in the beginning rounds when you're playing some of the lower clubs or, or you know, the Champions League group stages, you're not as interested. But when you start getting to those like semifinals, like you start rooting for teams you've never rooted for before. I found myself on the side of Inter Milan like last year. It's never going to happen again, but it's really in, enthralling right now. Yeah. And well, and 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 at least three of these are on my fantasy team. Mm -hmm. Uh so, so I'm really excited that they've made it this far. Park the bus against Rosette. We'll start with you, John. Uh, this is getting very, very tricky. And I am going with, I don't know what I'm going with. I'm going with uh, Rosette. Rosette. All right, and Jim. If if I could only use one of these two phrases again, it would have to be good, rose. Ed. Good way of thinking about it. I mean, if that that that's a good way to kind of force yourself yeah. into a decision on this. Um, if someone removed one of these from the lexicon, uh, which one would you prefer to be able to keep? And rose is still in there. So rose are our, our first or our third uh, semifinalist. I feel like Jose Mourinho just shed a tear because you we he can no longer park the bus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's, we wanted him out long ago. So now Gaffer and Home and Dry. We'll start with you, Jim. Uh, Gaffer, I still love it. I think he's got a very strong chance of going all the way here. Gaffer for me. Wouldn't surprise me based on the the effusiveness of 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 your votes in the previous rounds, John. Yeah, I, I mean, Jim Jim is now, he's in a position where he can actually predict what I'm going to do, and I, I am, I'm going to go gaffer. Okay. I mean, there's, there's going to be a situation where, where, where some of your favorites are not going to be able to, 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 to easily get through. You're going to have to make a difficult decision. Our final four for today, smash and grab, pockets of space, Rosette, and gaffer. Aston, without saying which one it is, do you have a favorite amongst those four? Oh, I definitely do, but I can't let them know. I, I, I believe in hoodoo, and if I if I say it out loud, it'll jinx it. Frank, frankly, I think you and me are on the same page based on our previous reactions with this one, but uh, but we'll we'll keep it secret. Um, same question for you, young noble. Without saying which one, do you have a favorite amongst those four that you'd like to see win? Yeah, I have a favorite. I have a favorite, but I'm going to keep that in check and not let okay. it out. Okay. Uh, although you may end up being, uh, I'll tell you what, if the final goes to a one, one, I don't mean to take the responsibility away from you, young noble, but we're going to give the responsibility of the chat. We're going to get the first 10 comments and, or the first nine comments and, and the winner will win. Uh, because we want this to be, uh, you know, for the people by the people. Um, so, uh, first we have smash and grab and pockets of space. We will start with John. Oh, this is so exciting. Smash and grab. For me? Okay. Smash no dramas and grab. about it. Smash and grab. Mm. All right. Jim? Mm. Uh, just think of Phil Foden. Ooh. Picking up, picking up the ball. And he's lost it to Erdegaard. And he's driving into those pockets of space. It's got to be pockets of space. All right, this is this is exciting. This is going down, and this one will go to Young Noble. 
Young Noble, who is going through to the finals of the FA Cup phrase uh, uh, of, of football phrases? Look, Aston can hardly live. Well, Aston's you know, going to lose his favourite here. I can see it. And he, he doesn't know whether he's whether he's quite equipped for this moment. This, this Aston is a huge... Aston loves Young Noble, but that could all be coming to an end right here. I'll be a shambles. I'll be a shambles. Shambles <laughs> was in there. Was in there. <laughs> Who's going through to the final, uh, Young Noble? Uh, you can't keep uh, getting lucky, uh, grabbing chances. I think you need those pockets of space. So I'm going with pockets of space to the final. <laughs> Fuck you! Get some! Oh, sorry. sorry, sorry. I mean, Smash and Grab was great, too. Smash and Grab was great. Aston completely losing himself in the moment. Oh, uh, young um, Noble, you know how to play the composure. Crowd. On the other hand, I am the, the always, as always, the model of restraint and, and appropriateness. So, uh, okay. Uh, Rosette and Gaffer, we will start with John. Okay, I've been uh, I've been strong on Gaffer all the way through, and I'm not going to change now. So, Gaffer is my choice. All right, Aston. I think we're headed for a, a disappointment here, but uh, uh, do we even need to ask uh, Jim Proudfoot about this based on his voting history? No, it's, an, it's another Gaffer. You can never have too many Gaffers. Okay. Mm. Well, now now we have a final, and I, I based on how the semifinals panned out. I'm worried. I'm very worried, Aston. Wait, um, wait, 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 wait. Let's do this up a little bit. In all of English spoken word, there is no competition higher than the FA Cup final of football phrases. Today, we have pockets <laughs> of space against Gaffa. Which one of these two titans of commentary classics will make it through? to the final and be crowned the champion. John, off to you. I think literally went in and I out of that. He went in and out of an I English accent. It was, kind of, it was hilarious. Yeah, John, who's who's your call? Oh dear. How do I follow a piece of oratory like that? Um <laughs> very my easily, very call easily. is yeah my call is Gaffer. Ooh, quick one with the gaff. Simple as that. And this could be the fi- this could be the final whistle right here. Pockets of space or gaffer, Jim. Well, in his cliched mohair coat, the gaffer does have lots of pockets of space and probably some illicit phone numbers. Uh, I'm gonna go for pockets of space. <sighs> I, he's oh, it's a, coming down to the wire. Okay, <laughs> we, we we're we're putting it to the to the to the to the chat. Uh, we're starting with yes. uh, from when when it began. So I'm going to scroll back a little bit here. Um, we have I'm I'm looking back for the uh, original. Although I don't know which ones were for the semifinal and which ones for the final. So if you've already entered one, start right now. Um, Everyone, if you've written it, write it again. We're starting with uh, Matthew Hudson's is the first one. Pockets of space. First one to five here wins. Pockets of space from Matthew. Gaffer, gaffer, pockets. It's 2-2. We're still going. Meanwhile, while we're waiting for the comments to roll in, I've got to know, from Nigeria, Young Noble, what are the people saying on the streets? What are they pulling for? Young Noble. What are they pulling for? What do the people want? Gaffer. Well, they want gaffer. Young Noble has come in with a gaffer. I'm completely lost on where we started on this. Who had the first? I'm ruining this right now. Who, who did I say had the first one? It was uh, it was supposed to be... Matthew Hudson, I think you said. Yeah, Matthew Hudson. Okay, there it is. Pockets of space, gaffer, ugh, gaffer, pockets. Gaffer, so it's two to three. Pockets, three to three. Pockets, four to three. Gaffer, four to four. Seth Thomas, did you just did you decide this? Pockets of space has won. Yes! 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 Oh, oh, come no, on, no, 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 no. come on! I cannot yeah. believe 
that this is the hour that Aston decided to take the shirt off. Uh, and he's gone. <laughs> coming, back. coming back. I'm, I'm, I'm regaining my composure. Oh, uh, there are children that watch no, the stream. Oh, so. uh, Aston, I didn't see it happening. I really, I really thought that Jim was going to go with Gaffer. He was so strong on Gaffer the whole time. I did not see that coming. It's unbelievable. It's happened. Incredible scenes. Incredible scenes. Or were you using your flair for the dramatic to put it to the crowd because you knew it would be a good one? Cool. Oh, what an accusation. Uh, that I Not an accusation. Any, I'm asking. Such impropriety. Um, no, I, I think Pockets of Space, had they met in the round of 16, I would have gone for Pockets of Space, I think so. I love Pockets I like, of Space. I like Pockets of Space. Not necessarily my favorite of the 32, but once we got down to that round of uh, 16, it was it, it was my favorite. So I would have. Are I, you I, suggesting I, that Proudfoot has a has a flair for the dramatic? I I, I I may be doing that. That but that was a complimentary accusation. It wasn't <laughs> a, an accusation by itself. We are now 10 minutes into the following hour. I did tell our next uh, group that we would probably run over a little bit, but I don't want to cut too much into their hour. Um, first of all, Young Noble. Uh, it's been a pleasure to spend more time uh, with you this time, and and you played a massive part in in determining this FA Cup. Uh, we'll do it again sometime soon. Any final words? And please tell everybody where they can find your incredible stuff. You are prolific and putting out content every single day. Yeah, big thanks, big thanks, big thanks to you, and I really enjoyed this. Uh... At first, when it started, um, I was kind of, uh, I didn't know what to say because um, having a live interaction with, uh, like I said, the godfathers, my godfathers of football commentary. And, well, it has been an amazing one. And also, I will keep doing what I'm doing as long as uh, uh, Jim Proudfoot, uh, John Champion, they are in support of what I'm doing. I will keep uh, doing it and making sure that the the, 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 the public space, the audience uh, get to hear their voices every week, most especially here in Africa. They get to hear their voices every week and I'll keep doing it. And also, uh, um, my work is, is all over the space, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of them. So big thanks to you and once again, it's a pleasure, Jim Proudfoot and Jim Champion. This is a massive day for me. I'm so, so, so happy. But I'm, I'm not going to eat again till nightfall. I'm not eating again today. I'm not eating again Beautiful. because of this. I'm so, so, well, so happy. Thank you so much, and and uh, and give my best to everybody there that you uh, that you see on a regular basis. And it's great to have you on. Uh, and we'll we'll do it again sometime soon. Thank you. Oh, Young right. Noble, really nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I've been up for a long time, so I'm I'm, I'm not necessarily <laughs> pulling the controls the best. And um, and I'm going to say to you first, John, because I know we've got a delay on on the internet. But uh, but John, thank you so much uh, for taking your time and 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 for uh, for working with us today to 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 help us get pockets of space to the promised land where they belong. Um, loved your commentary for the for, i mean we had you for the for the for the united game for the manchester united game uh while peter was doing it in uh in in the uk and and you made that game even more special with your incredible calls i'm sorry the end of the game was so boring but uh you know you can't win them all <laughs> what, what happened i've forgotten already <laughs> <laughs> so have we i think but but thank you so much john i appreciate your support and um and and jim uh it's a pleasure to meet you as well thank you for your support we are actually going to draw the winner but we're, we're going to do it at the beginning of the following hour uh so that we can get our next guests on but jim john thank you so much i appreciate it and uh hopefully we'll get another chance to 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 do this on a on a regular podcast where we can really talk to you guys about your careers and 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 go through questions and not put you to work uh playing silly games with us so so thanks to both of you so much i appreciate your time no not at all mike aston thank you very much indeed for the invite for coming on um really thank enjoyed you. it and yeah. um many congratulations on everything that you've achieved i think it's a fan obviously it's a uh, a hugely worthwhile cause and i think probably most of us nearly everybody watching will will have a 
personal uh, story to be able to tell, to be able to relate to um, why you are doing what you are doing and, and, uh, and also the good that it can um, benefit for all of us. So thank you very much for all the efforts that you've put in. I know that it has been uh, a huge logistical undertaking as aside from the, the, you know, the physical uh, nature of doing 27 hours. So many congratulations, guys, and the very best of luck with uh, the time you've got left. Thank you so much. Take care. Just... and we, We'll be listening for these phrases uh, the next time that you guys are doing a game. Listen, Elm Street is in, in the first 30 seconds. Of... Uh, it, it's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah. We'll, we'll be there. Bournemouth on Sunday. It's coming. It's coming. Take care, That's guys. Good exactly luck. what I wanted to get at. I, I need I need the Elm Street in my life. And thank you both so much, by the way, because it, it's often said, well, I said, not often said, I'll say it. A uh, football club is like the bride and the fans are like the groom and you guys are like the, the guys in this, in the, um in the church that's going to marry us. Right. You are the ones that unite us together forever. So thank you so much for bringing so much magic into so much of our lives. I promise you the next time you see me uh, and we do one of these, I will keep my shirt on. It will be fine. And we, <laughs> and maybe you could tell some of those stories about the early doors. You know what I mean? So have, thank you so much for being here. No, not at all. Actually, no, I wonder where you were going. That I thought we were going to be the confetti. That spoils all the, spoils <laughs> yeah, and, all the apparently, he doesn't know what a priest is called. And thrown out the back door. So I'm, I'm, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. I know what a preacher's called, but it's 2023, and they just came from a diversity and inclusion thing. So we've got to make sure to have everyone involved. Yeah. You know, a we don't use cultural officiant of a wedding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, so guys. Take care. Appreciate it. Bye, bye. Hey, Gooners. This is Alan Smith. This is Kevin Campbell. Lee Dixon. It's Colin Lewin. It's Gary Lewin. Charles Watts. Dan Potts. James Benj. Stanley. Tom from the Gooner Talk here. Ryan Ocross. Simon Collins. You may know me from the Evening Standard. You may know me from my time at Arsenal. You may know me from Arsenal or even the Hybrid Squad. I'm a bird cat wonderland. Being that physio set on the bench next to Arson with my rubber gloves on. The former Arsenal physio. The Emirates Press Box, from writing, from Twitter. From Goal.com, from Twitter, from YouTube. Football is the beautiful game and it brings us all together. Sometimes there are things even more important than wins and losses. And yes, even transfers. Every 30 seconds someone in this world gets diagnosed with blood cancer. The Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society works towards curing blood cancers. And provides support to families currently dealing with these diseases. Gunas vs Cancer was started in 2017 by a lifelong Guna who lost his father to leukaemia way too young. Since 2017, Gunas v Cancer has raised $120,000 for the Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society. And we need your help to keep the fundraising going in this year's campaign. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. Every donation helps. No matter the size. And every donation enters you into the Guna raffle. We have a great chance to win amazing Arsenal prizes, including game tickets, stadium tours, signed men and women shirts. And maybe a retro signed shirt by yours truly, Lee Dixon. Me, yours truly. Yours truly. Super Kev Campbell. So much more. It's easy to take part. Just go to www.gunasvcancer.com and donate directly to the charity. Pick the raffle prizes you want to enter to win and wait for the drawings at the end of the campaign. Again, that's www.gunasvcancer.com. We all know that victory grows out of harmony. Victory grows out of harmony. Victory grows out of harmony. With your help, we'll be victorious against blood cancer once and for all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your support. Thank you for your support.